Hello guys, it's Peter from Billabang. I was asked a few months ago if I could do a video of my setup, how I start the simulator, and of course I can. We are here in the basement, it is a bit dark, it's cold outside because it's early spring in Denmark, so let's call it cold and dark. Uh, if you hear some chatter, it's not the ATC chatter, it's my kids sitting next door playing Minecraft. Okay, so I have six computers in the cockpit right now. Uh, one main computer, as you can see over there, powerful computer that runs Flight Simulator, and then I have six of these office machines. And the reason I have so many is I got them for free, so the more the manier right now. The first thing I always do is to turn on power. I have two switches up here that controls power, one for the projector and one for all power supply units inside the cockpit. Next, turn on the computers. It's a bit dark, I know. One, two, three, four, five. The sixth computer is placed inside the cockpit. You can see uh, now there's a bit of power on the cockpit and the first computer is booting now. Uh, the sixth one I control via a switch here. Just press that one. The, the sixth computer is placed behind the FMC there. So you can see the instructor station over here, uh, the projector up there and all the computers here are now booting and uh, ready to start. On all computers I have uh, via the start menu in, win in Windows made shortcuts for the programs that need to be launched once once the computer is ready. As you can see here, Flight Simulator just launched automatically uh, because I have a shortcut in the start menu. And you can see the same on the computers over here in a few seconds. I made this drawing of the setup. Uh, I would like to run through it so you can see what is what is connected to what. Main instrument computer, main main PC up there, main computer is an ITIL i7. It has the yoke, the pedal, the throttle from a CH product, a USB connected, a projector, and a set of 5.1 speakers. It is running Flight Simulator, Runway Awareness and Alert System, which is a program that uh, alerts you when you approach a runway, saying approaching runway one two. Um, I was not able to get this to uh, work via network, so it has to be connected to uh, the computer that runs Flight Simulator. ProSim Audio is a ProSim program that plays audio files. This one plays the APU sound and the hydraulic pumps. Um, reason they are on this computer is that they should come from around more or less the same position as the um, engine sounds. So that's why they play on, on this computer. Then I have the instructor station. It's an old dual core computer. It runs ProSim server, the ProSim program that like ties everything together. A web browser, Active Sky for Weather, B Pilot, Let's Buy, Plan G, was it G Plan? Can't remember. That shows your aircraft on a map. Topcat for calculation, uh, weight and performance. White Client that connects to a flight simulator. ProSim Utils, Utilities, which is a program that allows you to do a whole lot of things with with the CDU. And then SAOC because I have uh, open cockpit things connected to this computer. It has a Blue card connected. We'll have at some point a Pokies card connected. Three open cockpit master cards and then speakers for the ATC VATSIM sound. The other computers, I have four computers and um, this just ha I just want to see if the computers were ready, not yet. Um, they will be shortly. See if we can get some power on the aircraft meanwhile. Push the ground call button. No, not what? Oh yeah. See if we can get some power on the on the cockpit. Okay, first computer up here. It's actually an ITIL i5 computer, pretty powerful. It runs the primary flight display, navigation display. Um, the reason this is a powerful computer is that displaying the terrain or the weather can be quite heavy on uh, um, on the computer, so the power, more powerful the better, and that is also why it only runs this program, ProSim Display, that then is connected to the two screens for the captain and the first officer. This is a Y splitter, so it's the same signal on these two. It's not two different independent screens. It's the same image you'll have on in both side, both sides of the cockpit. Second computer. Just need to get that ground crew working again. See if we get some power on. Okay, there. Second computer is the ICAS up here, main engine instrument. It is running ProSim Display to display the instrument and then something called ProSim AFAS. I'm not sure what this stands for, but it is a program that plays cabin sounds from sounds from the cabin. So when I program a flight from, say, Amsterdam to Copenhagen, you can hear the captain in the cabin say, welcome on board to this flight to Copenhagen. 
And once we land in uh, Copenhagen, it, you can hear the stewardesses say, welcome to Copenhagen or welcome to Hamburg or Amsterdam or Aalborg, wherever we have landed. It's just the program that plays YouTube clips uh, that I've downloaded, depend, uh, depending on uh, where you are situated, where you're landing. Speakers for that and a 15 inch monitor for the ICAS. Lower ICAS, ProSim display, ProSim audio. ProSim audio plays all the uh, all the cockpit sounds like you heard before. If I flick this seatbelt switch, there, that ding is coming from speakers up here overhead, over the windows and it's controlled by this computer. <coughs> Last computer is this one, is physically placed over there behind the screens because I was not able to extend the wire from the autopilot unit so that it could go all the way back here where the rest of the computers are. That's why it's up there. It is running. The uh, CDU program for the FMC. The MCP program for the autopilot. SIOC because I have open cockpit things connected to it. And then WideFS. 5 inch monitor connected. It is uh, the FMC screen. And then for the uh, CDU FMC, I have Open Cockpit's uh, keyboard card. It's a homemade unit. Uh, this is the autopilot. It's Open Cockpit versus uh, version 3 plug and play. Three master cards for the main instrument panel and the pedestal. And then uh, Open Cockpit servo card. So that is the setup. You can see here by now, now we are six minutes into the video that the instructor station over there is ready to go flight simulator is running this is Copenhagen and all screens is actually turned on as well and now we're ready to go uh, all I did was to turn on the computers and then they uh, automatically launched the necessary programs so that uh, things are now ready to, 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 to go let me just run through how, how this can be I've defined the IP address of this computer as a as a um, fixed address, it will always be 10 or 20 or 192, 180, uh, something depending on, uh, on, your, on your network. But this is a fixed address. So when a computer like this one uh, is turned on and it launches the ProSim display program, it automatically launches this and this program then knows that ProSim is placed here on the network and then they communicate automatically so I need to do nothing except to start the computers all these arrows I've drawn here is the communication so the instructor station is communicating with the main PC and then from here signals goes out to the different computers there's a bit of backflow of information as well from this computer because it has the uh, the, uh, these things connected that needs to go back to the instructor station so if I flick a switch on the main instrument panel or change frequency on the pedestal the signals from these home cockpit cars then runs back to the instructor station there's also a bit of information going from this directly to flight simulator which is the arrows you can see here and that is the signal from the autopilot unit for some reason, you need to have YFS installed on this computer and it speaks, direct, speaks directly to Flight Simulator. That doesn't go through the instructor station with the autopilot unit. So if you have the autopilot unit installed on a different computer, you need YFS. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. So this is the setup, this is how it works and um, it actually works flawlessly. You see the cockpit ready to go. I'd just like to show you this before I end this video, it's the speakers, to give you an idea. I've tried to place the speakers so they physically uh, is placed where the sound should come from, more or less. So the flight simulator speakers are placed here behind the windows. There's one just up here in the back of the cockpit. Two front speakers, a center speaker and rear speakers out behind the cockpit. Cockpit sounds is placed by, you heard them before, two speakers over the windows. That's some sound. Here is either through, you can see a headset over there, I have two headsets, and up here you might be able to see this black hole, the speaker, so I can get ATC sound via speakers inside the cockpit. And then cabin sounds, this one here, is placed by, played by computer, which is uh, the students are saying welcome to Copenhagen or the safety announcement, things like that, placed down here. So try to physically place the sounds where they should be in the cockpit. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's lovely to show you how easy it is to turn on the cockpit using ProSim. This is Peter from Builder Boeing. You guys take care. Bye bye.